Hello y'all. This is the Hearts of Iron 4 mod Man in High Castle. It is set in a world where Germany and the Axis won World War II. We're now on the select country screen and the only nation here is Amir which is in Russia I believe. And besides that there are symbols for the... for the Greater German Reich on the left, the Italian Empire in the middle, and the Japanese Empire on the right. And I should probably note this mod this modification is in a somewhat early stage of development as of recording. The start date of Man in the High Castle is 1960. And just to explain this world in more detail, it is based off of the, the 1962 alternate history novel, The Man in the High Castle, where FDR is assassinated in 1933. I'm just going off of the original story here because... The Man in High Castle did have a TV series in the 2010s, I think from 2015 to 2019. So, as I said before, FDR in this world was assassinated in 1933. There was an attempted assassination in real life, but it failed. But he does die in this timeline, FDR does. And this results in the continuation of the Great Depression and a policy of U.S. non-interventionism at the start of World War II in 1933. 39. This leads to, well, American inaction leads to the greater German, well, the Germans end up conquering Europe and just take over everything, and their Axis partners succeed at their goals as well, I suppose. I should, I mean, I think Italy, within the world of the Man in High Castle, this mod is somewhat original in how its countries are laid out and everything, because the book if I recall, was mainly focused on America, the USA, the territories of the USA, and well, just its general geographic region. And sometimes in the Man in the High Castle, Italy, even though they're an Axis power in real life, historically, they're just not very relevant in the timeline for some reason. And going on, though, the eventually, after Germany took over Europe, I guess, as well as its allies did all that, also, the Axis just took over there. The USA would be invaded by Japan on the west coast and Germany on the east coast. And the Allies would end World War II in 1947 in the feet, I think. In the TV show, in the 2010, some nuclear weapons were used on the USA. Like, I think maybe DC was bombed by a nuclear weapon. I could be wrong, though. I mean... It doesn't seem to be a victory point here, just it's gone. So maybe that is the case in this world. And let's go over the ideologies now and just see all the stuff. Here we have Amir, and they have, well, there's a number of ideologies in this mod. We have autocratic communism, communism, socialism, social democracy, liberal democracy. What is this here? Conservative democracy. Then there is authoritarian democracy. Despotism, monarchy, totalism. Wait, what is that? Totalism? Okay. There's that. Fascism. And there is national socialism. Then there is laws in the government, interior affairs, civilian affairs, economics, national defense, and research and production. And I think the civilian affairs and the interior affairs and economics, that's in national defense. That's pretty interesting. So let's go to research now and check that out. And if we go over to the infantry side, we have basically, it's mainly the same as it is in Vanilla Hoi 4, except there's an expanded anti-tank section, it looks like, it seems. And going forward, we have, well, going more to the right in the research tabs, we have support companies. Support companies seem like vanilla armor. Artillery seems like vanilla. There is naval. Helicopters are a thing in Man in the High Castle. Even though you gotta, you gotta research all that stuff. Air engineering is here. There is light industry, which involves chemical industry and agriculture. Then we have industry itself, which seems kind of like vanilla, but I think it's expanded in some ways. PVC is a thing, it seems. And with all that looked at, let's see the factions of this world. So let's see what those are. And we have quite a few of them. There's at least three. There's three. So we have the Pan Pacific Co-Prosperity Spear, and that is... Japan's faction, them and their allies. We have the Atlantic Europe High Shore Pact. It translated from German to English. It's the Atlantic European Pact. That is the Greater German Reich faction. And then we have the 
Patio de Roma, di Roma. That is the Pact of Rome, essentially, and that is the Italian faction. And with that, let's now begin going over all the countries in the world. We'll do that, and we'll, we'll begin in South America. Here we have Venezuela, and then Colombia. Venezuela is part of the Italian faction, I think. It looks like Colombia. And I should note, in the Man in the High Castle world, the Axis is feuding over the nations of South America and who they're aligned with, I believe. Then we have Peru. Peru is part of the Japanese faction. So is Ecuador. We have Bolivia. They're not part of anything. Argentina is part of the German faction. There is the Pan-Pacific Co-Prosperity Spear. They're in Chile. Well, Chile's part of their faction. So... Chile has a lot of Eastern, well, Western, South America. Then we have Uruguay, Brazil, Paraguay. Brazil is part of the Roman, the Italian faction. We have Bolivia. And for some reason, the Amazon Republic is a thing. And so is RK Carib, which it looks like the Germans took over the French, Dutch, and British parts of South America and made them into a puppet state called RK Carib, which I think also took over Cuba, it seems, yeah. And it's led by Charles Lindbergh. Oh boy. Now let's move over to South America. We have the Spanish state, there's the French state, they're part of the German faction. The Italian Empire controls Libya, Sonnet of Egypt, but the Kingdom of Egypt is part of that. So is Italian East Africa. We have RK Middle Africa, they're a... They're, they're led by Rommel. They are a right commissariat of the Germans. There's Western Africa who exist and they're guaranteed by the Spanish. We have Portugal, then there is, we have Portugal controlling, it seems, Northern Rhodesia, and they control Angola and Mozambique. We have RK Southwest Africa, there is the South African Republic, they are independent, and there is the Reichs Commissary at Madagascar. Then going over to Australia, there's the Australian Republic and the Altura, Altura Republic, it's basically New Zealand, and both of these countries are part of the Japanese faction. We have the Republic of Indonesia. There's North Borneo. And these countries, unless I say otherwise, are all a lot of nations here are part of the Japanese faction, which is pretty big. There's the Kingdom of Thailand. We have the Philippines. There is Indochina, the Kingdom of Thailand. Indochina is a puppet of Japan. We have Burma. There we have also the Assam Free State. And they're a puppet of India, it seems. The Assad Hind Free State. We have going into China, there's Yangui. They are a subject of, they're a warlord state, a republic China, who themselves is a puppet of Japan or the Japanese Empire. There's Chuan Yu. We have Jin Sui, Jin Sui. There's the Chinese Coastal Administration. They're a puppet of Japan. Then we have the Japanese Empire controlling Taiwan. And a Hainan to control that and the Japanese Empire is pretty strong here and then we have Amur they're part of that faction there's the Empire Manchuria we have the Minjiang autonomous government and then I hope I'm not missing any countries here and then now we have Siberia which is heavily divided we'll come back to that we'll come back to that we have say Tibet there's Qinghai the Zaibei clique and despite Japan controlling a lot of China, it's still very divided into different warlord states to an extent. There's Xinjiang, we have the Indian Free State who's a part of the Pan, -Pro the Pan Pacific Co-Prosperity Spear, and Japan controls Ceylon slash Sri Lanka, as well as the Maldives. So Sri Lanka and the Maldives are part of the Japan, they control it directly. There's Pakistan, they're a puppet of Afghanistan. How did that happen? Afghanistan's not part of any faction, but I guess they're just a puppet of Afghanistan. Then we have the Republic of Balochistan, there's Kashmir, there's Nepal, and Bhutan. We have the Free State of Bengal, and then we have, who else? What else do we have here? We're getting into Central Asia. We'll come back to Central Asia and Siberia, because there is, the USSR is basically broken down into different pieces. It's either controlled by the Germans, or it is a bunch of independent states. We have the Imperial State of Iran, there's the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia, Kingdom of Iraq, the Republic of Turkey in the Middle East. We have the Italian Levant, and then besides the Italian Levant, there is the Hashemite Kingdom of Jordan, and Iraq, Turkey, 
the Italian Levant and the Hashemite Kingdom of Jordan. They're all part of the Pact of Rome. We got the Mutalakite Kingdom of Yemen. There's the Sultan of Muscat and Oman. And the Italian Empire controls Abu Dhabi and Qatar directly, it seems. And let's go into Central Asia. We have Turkmenistan. There is the Turk Turkestan Legion, the Republic of Turkestan, Bukhara, Alash State, Kazakh SSR, the Republic of Kazakhstan. Central Asia here is very divided. We have the Ural Partisans, led by Zulkov. The Russian Republic is led by Alexander Kerensky, who in real life was the leader of a, how to say, a republic, a Russian republic that didn't go very well. And there's the Kanti Mansi, Yamalala, Yamala, I'm probably mispronouncing that. There's Tai Maria, Tai Raya, Tai Maria. There's Arctic Saka, the, there's Chokshi here, and they are in the far northern part of the world. There's the Yakut Republic. We have Nova Russia, New Russia, the Russian Soviet Republic led by Beria. And that is a very infamous leader of the NKVD in our timeline. He has the Prince of Terror leader trait in Man and High Castle. We have the Mongolian Republic and the Mongolian People's Republic. Two Mongolias. What a world this is. We have the Republic of Baryashia. And I believe that's all of the warlords in the former USSR beyond the Urals. And now the, this mountain range here. And... Well, whatever. At least in Eastern, what was the Eastern USSR as well as the Central Asia part of the USSR. And now we have Reich's Commissariat, Nord Russland, RK Moscow, and it's Reich's Commissariat of Moscow or whatever. And then we have the Reich's Commissariat of Volga, the Reich's Commissariat in the Caucasus, the Reich's Commissariat of Ukraine, the Reich's Commissariat of Ostland in the Baltics. Then we have the Greater German Reich led by a Adolf Hitler, who is in his 70s in 1960. We have the central, well, the general government. Now we have the Kingdom of Romania, Bulgaria, Serbia, Hungary, and in Scandinavia, as we're going through, well, the Nordics. We have Finland here, who is guaranteed their independence by the Greater German Reich, and they control Murmansk, it seems, as well. They have all their territory they got out of the continuation war in this timeline, and it's very interesting that the Germans control Leningrad slash St. Petersburg directly, and it's called Hinderburg. Wow, so we have the Kingdom of Sweden as well. There's Reich's Commissariat of Norway, RK Norwegian, Denmark, and then let's go into the Balkans because I don't want to miss them. We have the Hellenic State, they're a puppet of the Italians. The Italian Empire controls Albania outright. In the Balkans, we have the independent state of Croatia. Then there is Serbia who is a member of the German faction. And so Croatia and Serbia are both members of different factions. We have the Hungary, there's Hungary, Slovakia, and we have the Italian Empire. Austria, of course, is part of the Greater German Reich. And then there is, in Western Europe, as we get there, there is RK Netherlands, the Reichskommissariat of the Netherlands. There's the Reichskommissariat Belgian Nord Frank Reich. We had the French state, who's part of the German faction. The Atlantic European Pact. There's a Spanish state in Iberia, led by Franca. We have Portugal. Then there is the United Kingdom, who is part of the German faction. We have Ireland. They're part of the German faction as well. Then the Germans control Iceland directly. They also control Greenland directly. We're getting more toward North America now. We have Canada here. They're a puppet of Germany. There is the, we'll come back to more of what was the USA in this world. There is Mexico, well, what would be the USA in our own timelines, 1960. All of the Central America country gang is here. We have Guatemala, Honduras, El Salvador, Nicaragua, Costa Rica, Panama, although I should note the Germans control the Panama Canal. There is RK Carib in the British Honduras or Belize. And I think that was, that's British Honduras, now known as Belize. And they control Haiti as well. And there is the Dominican Republic. And now going to what was the USA, we have the RCMP. There's like a big, I mean, in the Rockies, there's a bunch of little tiny countries. And everything else is mainly controlled by the Japanese or by the German puppet of America. We have Montana, there's Idaho. The Rocky Federal Authority. There is Sabra. Interesting. We have 
the Free Trade Group. Then we have the Navajo, the Black Communist Rebel, that is the country name. The Nation of Islam is here. Then we have Denver. And so finally there is America and the there is the Japanese, well, the United Pacific States. And I think, not entirely sure here, I believe who controls Hawaii, I guess they do. No, Japan, the Japanese Empire just controls Hawaii. All right, then. And that is just something to see. Oh, I should, I about forgot them. We have Alberta here. Alberta exists and they're independent, which is just very intriguing, honestly. And with that, this has been Man in the High Castle, a mod for Hearts of Iron 4. It is pretty promising. It has potential, but it is early in development as of this time. And with all that said, if you enjoyed the mod, you can check it out in the video description. The link to it is there. If you enjoyed the video itself, make sure to like and subscribe.